home. Welcome to the new farm. It's a little tight right now. We, renter's still moving out of the house, but here we are. Hey everybody, my name is Kevin and uh, welcome to Hilltop Farm. We're just moving everything in. Uh, we just bought the farm about February and uh, we're slowly moving stuff in, renters moving out and uh, just wanted to maybe start a YouTube channel. Uh, show everybody what it's like to be a well, second generation farmer. My dad started the farm in, in Connecticut and now we moved up to New York. A little bigger and better. Uh, we got 120 acres up here, so we're looking forward to upgrading. Uh, a lot of big things coming this year, so this will be our first year in New York farming. So a lot of new things, learning curves. So as all people would know, uh, you can walk around the farm in a little bit. I gotta start moving some trailers, getting rid of some stuff from home and. Moving part sucks, but we're getting along. So here's a view from the back of the garage. Here's a 40 by 60 machine shed. There's actually a legal airship over there, across to there. Try to get a video of them throwing some fertilizer over there. It might come over the crest of the hill. Sorry for the wind, it's a little windy today. I'm not so surprised, it's about every day we're up here, it's windy. Oh, somewhere, oh, they might be filling over there, I think I hear something over there. There's an, um, a Mennonite neighbor, an Amish neighbor over there. There's a 40 by 40 shop, we'll go in there in a minute. Two of our concrete silos, you can see two more over there. There's a house, there's a garage I was just in. Here's uh, a 40 by 60. And here's our three hay wagons for now. The top one's a little five lug, not too big, so can't do much with it. Here's a view from our back. Still got a little bit of snow. It's April 3rd now? Yeah, April 3rd. Still a little bit of snow left. Just in the shady spots. It gets pretty drifty over here. It's always windy, so there's one of our four bottom plows. I accidentally dropped that there, but we own all the way out to that back point over there down this little hedgerow and then you go through the woods kind of sort of there's a little field there and then we own right up to that property line you go straight back we in the middle there and then we own uh kind of down around there kind of goes over the crest of the hill we'll get over there later there's one of the pastures kind of holds a little bit of water there's, there's a natural spring like up here in the pasture kind of just leeches down in but uh yeah so uh there's, a, there's the other silo so now you can see the high moisture corn silo that's a 24 by 60 concrete and then that's a 20 by 80 i believe harvest store in the back and then there's another dairy barn up there so we got a few bit of barns uh so here's our 40 by 60 shed, the gray shed, as we call it. Leave the door open. A lot of this equipment's actually new to us. We haven't used most of it. We bought most of it this year. Actually, we bought this down the road from us, 1540 Gale Blower. We had that little fertilizer spreader for a while. Our neighbor sold this to us. It's a 790 with the grass head and the corn head. Last year, oh, I don't know, about August, we bought this top air sprayer. It's a 45 foot booms, suction control on it. Should work out pretty good for us. I think it's a 500 gallon tank, not really sure. Bought this etch tether last year down in Pennsylvania. That came out of Pennsylvania as well, but bought this down in Pennsylvania last year. It's a 22 foot 
four star tether works really good i used it once at work last year but uh we got our sickle bar mower over here a little coon he's a little bit of work still but we don't really use it much so and then we got our manure pump this is for our lagoon I'll show you that in a little bit here's our uh new holland 36 flail trapper this thing works out amazing the pipes actually over there and we had to take that off for transport our two row john deere corn planter uh i bought this uh december i'd say at an auction down not too far about middle between here and my house at home 256 dolly rake and then there's a 55 uh new holland rake yep that so that's this barn not too full yet but we're getting there it's quite a bit to go oh and then i forgot about our little sprayer that's our old sprayer it's got like little pipe extensions on them. Probably, it used to be like a 15 foot boom, but I like a 50 gallon tank on it. worked for what we did, but getting bigger, so need a little more big of a sprayer. So here's our shop. Let's go. Not too light in here. There's not many lights. I mean, you could see when I turn them on, it's like a candle went on. And, but, uh, you don't have too much stuff in here. I'm trying not to fill it up with stuff. We want to put a cement floor in and insulate it and eventually put rolling doors in, but you know, money only goes so far. So here's our uh, Husky 3000 gallon slurry tank. We actually bought this from Duffy Ag on YouTube. Um, he's the one who actually inspired me to make these videos. Um, we bought it from him in like the fall, I'd say. I was out west, but uh, my dad went to go pick it up and the only thing that's missing is a PTO shaft, but we do got one. We didn't pay too much for it. We really don't have a purpose for it yet, but uh, we do have the lagoon, so eventually we'll grow into it. The only reason why this is inside as well is because uh, we have the storage for it. So eventually you'll see it outside and it's gonna get cleaned up as well. Here's our disc mower. It's a Vicon, nine foot cut. Don't know the model number on it, actually. It's kind of a mix up between Kubota. They don't really know what happened. Uh, trying to find parts for it's not very fun, but it's a decent, decent machine and uh, gets the job done. One thing we do like about it is the two point hitch here. Um, as you can see on it, we got a little bit of a receiver on it. So when we were loading it up, we Personally, don't like the two-point because it's kind of hard to steer it sometimes and you're backing up on the trailer, you're trying to look around. So we were actually at a place down in Pennsylvania and uh, he had this little hitch. We were kind of intrigued. So now we have a loader on our loader. We uh, come in and we hook right up to it. We have a chain here so it won't completely go back. It's got to get tightened up a little bit. But So now you can put it on your bucket and you could just walk it straight back. And when we put it on the gooseneck, it was a little tough to see, but not with the receiver, it was kind of nice. So uh, that worked out well. And we've had this for, I don't know, five or six years now. It cuts like amazing. We like the free blade on it and uh, we're eventually gonna upgrade it. It's a little rough, but it gets the job done for what we need. Here's my newest purchase. I picked this up in, uh, about the end of the year, December-ish. It's a 2021 BC 5070, 72 thrower on it. It's a, uh, came out of Michigan and uh, it's a clean machine. As you can see, and that forge blower is not actually ours. That's the farmers. They just still got some stuff here, but yeah. I mean, the paint's barely even off the knotters here. And the guy used it for about 5,000 bales. So I picked it up out there and got it trucked out here. I'm pretty happy with it. Got to uh, make up some stickers for it and uh, hilt that farm stickers and load it up with twine. Gotta put, still got to set it up actually. I didn't even put the tire on it. You can see right over here. I'll put that on it and 
pull the tarp up. Not worn in, but uh, excited to get that thing going and uh, see how it goes. Here's another workbench I picked up. Picked this thing up from a neighbor at home and it's a big workbench. The only thing is it's a little warped. I don't know if you can see it well, but it's a little warped. Tried to bend it, couldn't bend it. It'll work as is. So here's the 40 by 40 shop. As you can see, we do want to insulate it and uh, make it nice for these cold winters up here in New York, but doing what we got for now and uh, on to the next building. And there goes the neighbor spreading some fertilizer up there. They got 220 acres, 250 acres up there. Nice ground and uh, they're actually from 20 miles away. So I'm up here in the parts room. Uh, it's right off the dairy barn, the old one, and uh, not really have much use for it. So we decided to make it a parts room. It's really not much. Um, I want to put some shelves across this wall here. This hay barn in there. So kind of want to just make shelves on this side, make some shelves in the middle here. And uh, we got some shelves on this side as well. So I'm starting to fill this up. Um, so we just want to kind of make this our parts room for now while the shop, we've got to get the concrete floor and stuff in. So kind of working along what we got. So, but it holds a lot of stuff too. So here's one of the silos that's actually connected into here. Um, we got some stuff in here. Actually this floor is rotted too. So that's got to get fixed. Um, but it's filling up with stuff quick. There's not too much. We've only done like one load of stuff in here. And uh, I'm just moving some more stuff in now. So moving along well. So I'm gonna move over here to the hay barn. We're gonna make that a sawdust shed there. Not really sure what it was before. There's the hay barn door. It's a little dilapidated, but there's a an old exhaust. Well, not an exhaust bin, but a fan. Oh, barn door, and there's one of the hay elevator doors. Here's the old milk house. You can actually go inside. Show you what it looks like. Not too much in here. So this is the front door off the house, I think. I think. There's like a little parts, bolts room kind of thing. Most of they used it for. There wasn't too much in here, but they had some barbed wire, and they're going to leave for us, and welding helmet and we actually bought this elevator from the farmers it's a 20 footer looking for a little bigger but as you can see i do have some hay trap i have to clean out there's quite a bit of junk hay and unfortunately they put a loft in here i'm not really sure why but uh that's got to get taken out so we can back hay wagons in and we're gonna make an actual door the barn's a little old, you could see. I mean, it's stamped on the wall over here. 1892. You can barely just about see it. So, it's a little old. But it'll store some hay for a little while. As you can see, they put some metal siding up there. At one point. Uh... Actually, there's a funny story about that roof there, but we'll t say that another day. Uh, so, this bay is actually like two stalls. We got one here, and then one over here. And then if you come over here on this side, we have just one. Just one stall. So I'm going to fill this up with second cut here. And then that side with first cut, because that's bigger. And then put the hay wagons right in here. So that should work out well for us. So here's our walk down the hill. Here's our, the newer of the two barns. This is built in 1972. Silos are, well, the two on that side of the driveway are 1972 or three. And then this is a little old, a little newer. I don't know how much newer, but. So we were just in the hay barn there. There's a the truck in the trailer. And then this is the extension on the hay barn. So this is just for cows. This holds about 50 cows. So we'll head in here. So here we are. Some of this stuff's ours, some of it's not. 
doesn't really matter. There's not much stuff in here. So this actually used to be a free stall. You know, kind of hard to believe, but they used to walk the cows in there. And then they used to scrape this with the skid steer with the barn cleaner there. So the cows were hardly tied in. I mean, they, yeah, the ties are there and stuff, but it's uh, a little different setup. But then they, I think they did use it as an actual tie stall. And here's the old barn. There's some of our stuff here. And this is what they used to milk in back in the day. You see, we got a bean to fix over there. And it's an older barn, but that's how they all are. There's a calf pen up here and some more stalls. There's really not much to it. i to do some concrete work. You can see cows haven't been in it for a while, so no, that one's not as bad, but you can see here. It's all undercut, and we're going to have to cut it back, reform it up. If we're going to use the barn cleaner in it, but we don't plan to for a little while, so not too much of a good deal. And here's the feed room. Uh, this I low on those from down here. I don't know the size of these. These things are 60 footers, I think. They're pretty big. Unloaders are in them. They're right there. This one's hanging. They say they all work. Who knows? They haven't been used in seven or eight years. And then here's the other unloader. Another silo. Unloaders right there. And plenty of pigeons to shoot if anyone wants to shoot any. I might not be able to see that on YouTube, but. That's where this one dumps. They got a nice little feed room here. So, and then the parts room is actually right here. We were just in it. So, yeah, it's right here. So, so now we're walking down to the newer side of the barn. I forget the date that this was built. It's something in the 90s, I believe. Got some nice stalls in here. They took the mats out. I think they were all shot. So here's our two row corn planter and our um, mower and stuff, bandsaw. We got some stuff hanging around in here. Unfortunately, the barn cleaner is not in this end. It's got taken out. And there's some in this end. And it goes about maybe to the new, the older barn cut off. So we're gonna get some new chain and our new unloader. And yes, there is a manure room there. We'll go down there in a second. So here's our manure room. This tractor and chisel power are not ours. These are the original farmers here. So this is actually all insulated in here. So when they were spraying manure and the burn cleaner used to come right out here. As you can see there, it used to go right out. Right in the manure spreader, it was nice. So for now, what we're gonna do, since we don't have concrete floor and heat in the other shop, this is gonna be our shop. Toolbox will go on the back and, you know what, we can do some work in here. We got some work to do on some tractors and some equipment. So it'll work, got a nice big door and uh, sure got well for us. We're gonna eventually possibly use this barn. So, and then we'll put the manure spreader in there and put the unloader in, but not for now, we'll wait a little bit. So we're down in the tie cell barn now. We are not planning on milking cows. Uh, my dad might want to, but I don't really plan on doing it. Um, got a barn cleaner chain and the loaders outside. And this is the corn. How much corn silo? I'll show you from the outside. There's that one. There's the corn silage and the haylage there. And we actually have a regular corn bin there. The farmer said they never used it because they don't have a purpose because they have the high much corn bin. So we actually have a roller mill, not a hammer mill, it's a roller mill. And uh, kind of goes through this whole setup. I don't really know how it works. Unloads into this bin here. And then this auger kind of crosses up, up here, dumps in here, um, dumps in here. As you can see, it rolls it up, grinds it. And then you put your little cart underneath it. So uh, there's some stalls up there. There's about three. And there's a bunch of calf, little calf stalls up in the front. We're gonna take out, we're gonna make some more regular stalls like that. We got a whole bunch of stuff in here. We got some beef cows to bring up. So we're gonna just use this end of the unloader because 
why spin it all the way around if we could just use this end. So unfortunately I have to move some of this stuff here, but not a big deal. We got the sleds up here. We were riding snowmobiles a couple weeks ago, but now we're thinking about dropping the plow on the ground soon. So I'm gonna have to put these away somewhere. So now we are in the TMR mixing room and that's the harvester over here. Hopefully there's enough light so you can see it. It's kind of dark over here. Here's the harvester in all its glory. And there's actually a chute that's in the barn that kind of goes up and into the harvester. But this got slid over, so it's, we gotta move it over a bit again because the farmers needed to get something out of here. So you can see this is the concrete and it dumps down. And uh, well, I don't know how you're gonna make that angle. So we gotta shift this back over here. It's a tight fit in here. We don't really plan on using the TMR. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing a heifer raising facility. So I'm not gonna sell this thing cause it's, it's here. Um, and if I ever do decide to milk, which I really don't plan on doing it, but I have the option to. So now we're walking down to the end and uh, the barn cleaner goes out right here. And I'm gonna do this from in here. So the unloader goes out there and it drops into a pit. It's uh, the eight or 10 feet deep. I don't know. I don't know how many gallons it holds. Well, that manure pump I showed before, it goes in our slurry store. It holds about 750,000 gallons of liquid manure. <laughs> so that'll do that. Um, we don't really plan on using the uh, manure tank right now. I think we don't have enough cows to justify doing it. And yeah, we have the pump and the tank and stuff. There's a custom guy who actually has that full right now. And uh, he did all the land at our place for a couple years. And then there's another like 700 acres that these farmers owned. And uh, they did all the around, ground around here. So they would uh, basically just use it as a transfer tank and kind of just pull into it and put out of it. Um, so that barn's pretty nice. It needs a little bit of work. It needs a gutter on the front and we have all the stuff to do it. Um, see, there's the truck up there. And there's the no room. And there's our four bottom plow over here. So we don't actually know what this one is might connect to it but here's a real pet oh shit I think we might have to pump it down actually you can see the snow there so yep the unloader sucks right down in and it's gonna be a learning curve and then we use it before so then the pump you put the tractor there and you pump it up not sure how it actually works we need to, gotta get a lesson on how to use this thing here but we got all the setup for it so we're just gonna let the custom guys use it for now and uh here's our trailer home we have over here we're not gonna live in that i have actually never been inside of it before and then that garage we're gonna make that a wood shack but uh, you can see the tire tracks here uh, I think. and then here's one of the pastures back here actually the fence is down here i gotta get that addressed so here's one of the pastures it's smaller smaller size but it holds a lot of water remember that pond i was saying before yeah well there's a culvert that goes under there and it kind of leaches out through here and there's a pond a little bit down the road and it kind of dumps in there we're not too fond of it because now the cows are out here or they're in the land of the mud and everything else but it's high and dry up here so not too bad up here quick so i'm gonna try and not drop my phone it's a little windy up here you can see it's about oh, maybe a third full of manure we're like i said we're probably not gonna use it but you know what we got it it's not worth anything for scrap nobody's gonna buy it so might as well keep it here you're also invited to the swim pool party we're gonna have in the summer my, my dad said we're gonna put a jet ski in there so here we are out in the back of the property. Get a little get around vehicle for here. Kind of need it. So we own all the way up to that corner there. And then we own that farm over there. We 
I'm kind of through the woods here. There's a, we're going back here too, but woods are woods, it don't really matter. But we actually own straight back here, kind of. Uh, and then we own back over here too. The wood line's not really straight, so it's kind of hard to, that's why I guess I didn't pick a great spot to do this. But we're not all the way out in the back yet. And uh, this is like, I don't know, a little under half miles back here. All the way to the back of the property is half a mile. So from the front to the back is half a mile. So we'll go up there at one point on the hill, and then we're gonna go all the way up to the back section there. I'll show you that. So here's uh, one of the corners of the property here. There's the farm up there. Corn lots over there. We own all this. So we own up to that hedgerow here. Down over there. Uh, organic guy that owns all this as you can tell he's doing a great job maintaining it hopefully one day maybe we can buy it in the trigger store so clear some hedgerows when we got it eventually we want to clear this hedgerow here and here because that hill right there is awfully steep so i'm not sure if you can really hear me but there's the back corner of the property right there that fence post that maple tree right there is beautiful in the summer it is just a Perfect this roundest maple tree possibly find. So we want to put a uh, nice picnic bench here. Uh, over here, it gets a little wet, it's a little flatter, so it holds a little bit of water. Um, but we own up this hedgerow here. You see the farms over there. That's a perspective. And we own straight through this back. We don't own that field there or any of this stuff here. So it's straight back. So, uh, Nice place out here. And we don't own that side. There's a uh, Mennonite neighbor who owns that. So there goes the neighbor spreading fertilizer again. They got their truck over there. We run up to this corner here and uh, you own out there. Nice view up here. I can watch, look at from up here when it's nicer out. Feels a lot better, but awfully windy right now. 